Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a great evening. I want to welcome you to First Baptist Church Donaldsonville in our midweek prayer service and Bible study. It's so good to have you uh, join us through Facebook Live. We praise the Lord for his goodness and grace and for him giving us another day to live for his glory. We praise the Lord that he is in control and that he loves us and that he allows us as believers to have a relationship with him through Christ Jesus our Lord. And uh, this evening, before we start our uh, prayer time, I want to mention a couple of announcements. Uh, first, all, uh, first off, on Sunday morning I announced that we are currently taking deacon nominations for the upcoming year. We'll be electing three deacons. And so uh, when you come into the church on Sunday, if you're able to come, um, you will find in the very back, as you come into the into the uh, sanctuary on the table, is the deacon nominating uh, forms. Those are due the 16th, so we're taking nominations through the 16th. So pray about that. Certainly go to the Bible, go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, look over and pray over the qualifications of a deacon. We don't want to take this lightly. This is not a popularity contest. This is something that we really want to seek the mind of the Lord so that it is, it is God's men who are serving in those, um, in those positions. And I will say this, if you're not able to, if, you don't, if you're not at a place yet where you feel comfortable coming to worship, you can come during the week to the church office and you can pick up one of those uh, nominating forms and fill it out and then you can turn it into the um, church office. I uh, want to remind everybody as far as our giving, thank you for your faithfulness and giving, but uh, just again want to remind us that we have three three ways that we're we're taking up offerings. Of course, in the back of the church uh, on Sunday mornings, we have the little church that you can place your offering in there. You can mail it to the church, PO Box 81, Donaldsonville, Georgia 39845, or you can drop it off at the uh, church office during during the week. Whatever uh, is most convenient for you. We, Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, be praying for Brother Adam as this Sunday morning he will be uh, bringing God's word during the worship service. My family and I will not be able to be here uh, Sunday, uh, but I know that uh, the church is going to be blessed by Brother Adam. The Lord always speaks through Brother Adam, and he's always faithful to, to preach the word. And so pray for Brother um, Adam. All right, well, with that, we just rejoice again in the Lord. So, so good to know the Lord. You know, I don't know um, what I would do if I did not uh, know the Lord and have that, that security and that peace of knowing that uh, I belong to him and that he holds uh, my tomorrows in his hands. And I hope that you have that peace as well. We look at the world and we see how the world is panicking and, and uh, just scratching our heads wanting to know what, you know what tomorrow holds. Uh, yes, these are these are concerning days, but we as believers we don't have to live in fear. Uh, fear is is not of the Lord. We know that, and so tonight we just celebrate Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope you know Him in a personal uh, way. And I know that you have uh, praises as well. And while we're not able to to share those publicly, uh, just rejoice in the Lord and how God is working in your life. Well, just as a uh, way of prayer. I want to mention a few prayer requests that we have uh, received. We received a prayer request uh, from a lady by the name of Karen Weathersby, and uh, she just asked us to be, she has uh, several requests here, and so I'll just mention these, and so if you'll just jot her name down and pray for uh, Karen, but she's asked us to pray for her mom, her spouse, and his family, her brother Mark, and his family. She has a, a cousin, and um, she's just asked us to pray for salvation, pray for God to bring healing and deliverance and restoration. So pray for Karen Weathersby and her uh, family. And then we have the, the family of Sammy and Mary Gray. That is Marshall Williams' sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Um, they both went home to be with the Lord uh, this week. They passed away from the COVID uh, virus, and so... We rejoice in one sense, knowing that because uh, both Sammy and Mary 
and trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're in glory right now and they're with Jesus and their time of suffering is over. And so we rejoice uh, in that thought, but we certainly pray uh, for their family as they uh, mourn their passing. I know that they, they will be missed dearly. They were a sweet couple. And so um, pray for that uh, family. And also Lake Seminole Baptist Church. That was their church home. And so pray for that, uh, that church. Um, our janitor, Victor LaCappa, he is, uh, for several months, really since even before Christmas, has had lots of health problems. And his wife, she's been filling in in his place here at the church. She does a great job cleaning the church. But she shared with us uh, that Victor's been having nausea, uh, nausea for several days. He's got a scheduled appointment uh, with um, uh, the doctor. And uh, it might be liver-related. So um, pray for uh, Victor. Uh, Greg Long, that was Kevin Long's cousin. We prayed for him last week. He had tested positive for COVID-19, but he is doing he is doing better, and he's back at work, so we rejoice in that. Julie Payne, that's, uh, of course, we all know um, Julie and Mark and, and Jan. Uh, last report that I received from Brother Mark is they are all doing well. Um, Julie appears to have fully recovered from the COVID, and, and Mark and Jan so far don't show any symptoms, so continue to pray for the Payne uh, family. We continue to pray for Grace Oswalt. That is Chris Widener's mother. Her radiation had to be uh, put on hold as they found another tumor and uh, she had surgery this past Friday. Surgery uh, went well, but we want to continue to pray for Miss Grace. Continue to pray for Kim Mitchell. She's recovering at home from her hip replacement surgery and then also continue to pray for uh, Lee Scott, as uh, she's recently uh, finished her chemo uh, treatments, but she's just been having some some complications, and so um, if you will pray for Lee Scott, certainly pray for our country, praying for healing physically. But uh, as I have said many many times before, we we need a movement of God in America. Uh, pray for a revival amongst God's people. As God's people, we will keep our eyes focused on Jesus and that we will hunger and thirst for him, that he will be preeminent in our lives. These are not times, of course, it's never a time um, to um, be apathetic as Christians, but certainly in these days, uh, we want to take advantage of, of all that's going on in our society to use this as, a, as an opportunity to spread the gospel we need to be doing that each and every day, um, but certainly now as people are looking for answers. And so pray for our pray for the church, generally speaking, in America, and then pray for a great awakening that uh, we will see many, many people coming to faith in Jesus Christ. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of the book of uh, Genesis. You know, we, we learn a great uh, theological truth in the book of Genesis, and that's about the regarding the providence of God. And um, you remember the story with Joseph and how his brother sold him into slavery and all the events of Joseph's uh, life. He ends up in, in um, prison for two years and, and then God puts him in that place of um, authority under the Pharaoh and how God used uh, Joseph to provide for his people. And all that I say, uh, at, the, at the end of the book of Genesis, it says what men intend for evil, God uses for good. And so uh, I think about now, all the things that are going on in our society, how men are doing so many wicked things, but yeah, how God can use all those, all those bad things to accomplish great things for his kingdom. And what, a, what an exciting thing it will be when we see, and, and, and one day maybe we'll get to heaven and we'll meet people who, who share that they came to know the Lord in the midst of all that's going on in our in our culture right now so pray for our country pray for our leaders certainly we pray for president trump and uh, this is an election year i don't have to tell you that so many things going on with that and so we we pray that we will um, pray for our leaders as we are commanded to do in scripture so pray for our governor as as well that they will make wise decisions we're praying for our school system they have made the decision to uh, bump school back to start on the 24th. It was scheduled for the 12th. Um, 
but we just need to pray for the school administrators that they'll have wisdom to, to make the very best decision on behalf of the children and the teachers. Uh, that's a huge responsibility. So we want to pray for them and we want to pray for our teachers and our students. And it's a lot of, you know, a lot of uncertainty right now for our teachers and, and students. So, so if you will, uh, tonight we're going to pray for that specifically, but also in your own devotional time, uh, be sure and lift up our, our, our students and our teachers and school administrators. And last but not least, we're praying every Wednesday night and hopefully every day uh, you pray for the lost by name. We're going to call them out by name. Um, and as we pray in just a few moments, you just call those people out that you that you are concerned for, that they don't know the Lord, and just ask the Lord to supernaturally open their hearts to receive him as Lord and Savior. So I know that you have your own personal request. God knows those. Um, but if you will, wherever you're at, just just go just take a just take a moment with me and bow your head and let's let's take these needs before the Lord. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for blessing us. Uh, you are you are our sovereign Lord who loves us and you're gracious and you're faithful and you're merciful and and we just thank you that in your grace you allow us to know you personally and we thank you for the peace and the blessings that come with that. Uh, Lord, um, I want to pray this evening for all the requests that that um, we probably all have just different burdens and concerns and so Lord right now I, I lift those needs up to you. I don't have to call those out publicly because you know the needs before we even have them. And so, Lord, I pray for our needs tonight. Uh, Lord, tonight I want to pray for this family of Karen Weathersby. Lord, there's physical needs here. There's spiritual needs. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would work in, in Karen's family. I pray for the family of Sammy and Mary Gray. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much that both Sammy and Mary had that time in their life where they 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 personally came to know you as Lord and Savior. And so, uh, Father, we're comforted in knowing that they are with you now. But, Lord, we pray for their family, uh, Lord, that you would comfort them. You are the God of all comfort, and I pray that their family would would experience um, you during these difficult times. Uh, Lord, we pray for Brother Victor as he continues to battle on his health and for this nausea he's been having. Lord, I pray that you would bring relief there and Pray for the doctors to have wisdom to figure out what's going on with Victor. Um, Lord, we pray for um, Miss Julie Payne and Mark and Jan and just continue to pray for healing for them. For Miss Grace Oswalt, Lord, we, we pray for, for um, just a miracle in her life as she's battling uh, cancer. We pray for Chris and the family as they walk this difficult journey with her. Continue to pray for Kim Mitchell, as she recovers from her hip replacement uh, surgery, Lord Jesus, just um, just touch her, and we just pray that uh, she re recover um, quickly and that um, the surgery will accomplish everything that it needed to accomplish. We pray for Lee Scott tonight as she recovers from the chemo treatments and has been dealing with some some issues, and so uh, we just we just pray for her. Lord, tonight we also pray for our country. We ask for a great movement in our country, both physically, Lord, for the doctors and the researchers as they're trying to find a, a vaccine. And Lord, we do pray for a vaccine, but Lord, we know that ultimately our hope is not in the vaccine, it's in you. And so Lord, I pray for a great revival and awakening in this nation. I pray that people would come to know you as personal Lord and Savior through all this and that we would shine the light of Jesus everywhere we go through the words that we say in our actions and, and may uh, the world look at us and, and may they not see us panicking and, and complaining about all the things that are going on, but may we be faithful to just um, emulate the joy that, that believers should have because we know who we belong to. Um, so Lord, we, we pray for our nation. We pray for our president, President Trump. Um, we pray for our governor and all of our governors to have wisdom all the way down to our local officials, uh, Lord Jesus. And we also pray for the first responders, our police officers, Lord. We, we just ask your hand of protection upon them as they serve us. And Lord, we know that certainly many of them are discouraged right now. And we just pray that you would encourage them. Thank you for what they do uh, for us, uh, Lord. And we pray for the, for the loss tonight, Lord Jesus, that um, those people that we, we know personally, we have concern about, Lord. We call them out to you right now. 
And we ask that you would uh, speak to their hearts and draw them to yourself. And so, Lord, we pray for this Sunday as we will again gather for worship. Thank you for, for letting us live in a state right now that we have that freedom. And we're grateful for that. I pray for those churches and in states that have been told they cannot assemble together as believers. And I just pray that they would have wisdom to make the right decisions regarding that. We're, we're living in some very difficult times. And so I pray for those churches. And um, Lord, I pray for Brother Adam as he'll be speaking Sunday morning. And, and Lord, I pray that as he studies your word, that you would give him the message that First Baptist Church needs. And so, Lord, thank you again for this time. We just ask that you would bless uh, our devotional, and, and may you be glorified in it. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, tonight we are in the uh, book of Psalms, and we're in Psalm 150. And so that means that we are in the very last book. Um, can you believe that just a little over seven years ago, I started preaching through the book of Psalms, and uh, every Wednesday night, we have, um, you know, just methodically worked our way through the book of Psalms, and finally we come to this this final uh, Psalm, Psalm 150, and really this is like the grand finale. We just celebrated the Fourth of July, and you <laughs> you know what it's uh, like probably to be at a, a fireworks show, and they save that grand finale at the last. is just a you know massive explosion, a bunch of fireworks at the all at one time and that's really what this this psalm is and it's a very fitting into the book of psalms because it just concludes with this call for for praise to praise god and that's really the only way you can end a book like uh psalms is just in a word of praise a reminder to to praise the lord and really you know after you read the book of psalms really we don't need to be reminded as god's people praise the lord it just comes naturally because of all that we've learned in the book of Psalms about God and all he does for us, the only fitting response is to um, praise the Lord. And so as we look at this, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, if, you have your, if you have a copy of God's Word, just follow along. The Bible says, Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, starting in uh, uh, Psalm 146, we found that it was this, this closing section in the book of Psalms, and it's every, from one, Psalm 146 through 150. Each one of those psalms have dealt with this subject of praise, and so we conclude tonight with just talking again about praising um, the Lord. And I want to mention four things that we get out of the text in regards to praise. First of all, in verse 1, we learn about the location of praise. Uh, where, where are we to uh, praise God? And the psalmist gives us two two places that we praise God. First of all, he says, praise God in his sanctuary. So in the Old Testament times, um, that would be in the temple where God's people would come and they would worship and praise um, the Lord. In our times, it's God wants us to corporately come together and for the purpose of praise. Um, and we do that on Sundays. And that's why the book of Hebrews tells us, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Uh, he wants us to come together. We come together for fellowship. That's important. Uh, we come together to, to um, study God's word. That's important. We come to church to, to serve. We come to church to, to sing. Ultimately, why do we come together as, as a body of believers? It's to praise the Lord. Everything that we do um, in corporate worship is for that purpose of, of praising the Lord. That, that's why we come to church. And if we come to church for any other reason than to praise the Lord, we're coming for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, right now, we're praise the Lord, we've been able to come back together, somewhat speaking. For a while, we weren't able to come at all, and, and we were all 
really wanting to get back to church. Um, and I and I heard a lot of people saying, you know, I want to get back to church because I miss my 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 fellow church members, and, and I did too. I can't tell you how much I missed seeing you each and every uh, Sunday. But you know, really, as important as that is, that's not really the real passion why we should come to church. Um, we should want to come to church so that we can praise the Lord together. And so we praise corporately in the house of God. But secondly, he says, praise him in his mighty heavens. Talking about the expanse. Um, so basically, wherever God is, well, God is everywhere. So, so we praise him corporately in the house of God in corporate worship. And, and by the way, I hope that you are doing that faithfully, whether right now it's through Facebook Live, you're joining us on Sunday mornings, or you're coming physically. I hope that you're doing that. That's so important. But so we do that corporately in the house of God, but individually, where do where do we praise God? It's everywhere. Uh, wherever we are, we're praising um, the Lord. So if it's you driving to work in your car and you're listening to the Christian music, you just you just praise the Lord. Or you're at your home and you have your devotional time, wherever it is. It, we're, we're praising the Lord at all times. Uh, going back to Psalm 149, 149 verse 5, it says, Let the godly exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Have you ever been sleeping and you just wake up in the middle of the night and you just sense this, um, this leading to... Just start praying, and, and, and in that time, you just begin praising the Lord. So, so the location of praise is corporately in the house of worship, but individually, we praise Him um, everywhere. Well, number two, as we move into the, the psalm, we come to verse two, and we find the reason for praise. Why do we praise the Lord? We've just been, we've just been told to praise God at all times, everywhere. Well, why do we do that? Well, He tells us to to uh, praise him for his, his um, mighty deeds, the things that he does, the things that he has done. We've looked in the Psalms. Um, psalm 19 talks, it's the Revelation Psalm. We, we know that there's God when we look at his, his creation. And, um, and so we praise him for the fact that he created this world, this, this amazing world world, this universe that we live in. He created all with a spoken word. And not only did he create it, but he's still involved in his creation. The book of Colossians tells us that he's holding it all together. If it were not for God holding it together, everything would just, just explode and, and go into to utter chaos. But he's holding it all together. And when you when you think about that, all you have to do is go out at night and look up at the stars at night and see all the stars. Or you go to uh, right here in our own state, you go to Stone Mountain or Providence Canyon or you go down to the beach and you see the, the, the beauty of the ocean. You look up at the sky um, and, and you just see the, the creation. It speaks of the, the awesome creator that we serve that just causes us to praise him. So we praise him for his deeds and, 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 and the fact that he, he provides for his children. He protects us. And, and certainly when we think about his deeds... We think about his work that he accomplished on the cross. Um, you know, I don't know what you may be going through today, and I don't, I don't want to make light of anything that you're, you're facing today. But I can say this. If you know Jesus Christ, no matter how bad this world gets, you have a reason to praise because you've been redeemed. And that was only because of God's good grace in your life. And so we praise him, that we belong to him, that we have been redeemed, that we are part of the family of God. And one day we're going to be with him in glory. And that makes us shout. And I hope that that gives you strength. I hope that that's the anchor you cling to in this life, knowing that you belong to the Lord. So, so he, he tells us to praise him for his mighty deeds, but then praise him for his person, who he is. He says, Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Those are his attributes, those things that, that describe him. Uh, as we have studied through this marvelous book of, of Psalms, we've, we've studied the, 
the different attributes of God. We've we've learned about His holiness, the fact that He is He is completely holy. He is completely pure. We've learned about His omnipotence, that He is all powerful. We've learned about His omniscience, that He is He is all knowing. We've learned about His providence and His sovereignty and and his faithfulness, and his love, and his mercy, and his grace. And so all those things describe who he is, and and so that causes us to praise him. And so when you have your own personal times of praise, you just, you just call out those attributes to him and thank him for who he is. So that's the reason for praise. So we've talked about the location of praise, the reason for praise. Now in verses 3 through 5, he, he speaks to us regarding the manner of praise. How are we to worship him? He says, praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and, and pipe. And praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing um, cymbals. So, so here he tells us the how of worship. How do we do it? What's the manner of worship? And you notice he lists out all kinds of different instruments, um, and and I'm not going to go into this tonight. But these different instruments had had significant meaning for the people of God in the Old Testament. The the different instruments would have been used at different celebrations. You know, if they were celebrating a great military conquest, or there there would be a, a, an instrument that might be prayed. And so when they worship, they would play those instruments to just remind them of of God's work in their in their lives, and it would just motivate them um, to praise. And so we have all these different instruments. And uh, I think in corporate worship, we should have um, you know different instruments that we use to to praise um, the Lord. And remember, when we're in worship, the the audience that's is is not the congregation. The audience is God. He is the one that we are playing for. And we get that, we, we forget that. It's not the people sitting out in the pews, but he is our audience. And so so we the psalmist says, use all kinds of different instruments. He is worthy uh, of, of this. And he even mentions dance. Now he's not talking about some kind of provocative, um, inappropriate kind of dance. I don't know what that would look like, but I but I know when you look in the Bible, there were there were people who who danced um, before the Lord as they celebrated different things. We know that David danced as the the Ark of the Covenant came back into Jerusalem, and he danced um, before the Lord. And so there's a variety of different ways. And as I was looking at these different instruments, I was reminded when we uh, took our mission trip to Ghana back in uh, January and, and February, we had. Uh, gone to several different churches, and I'll, and I'll never forget, uh, we went to this one small little church in the middle of this jungle, very, very primitive, um, and this one old man, he just stood up there, and he had a harmonica, and uh, he played at the cross on that harmonica, and it was such a, it was such a blessing, you could just sense the Spirit of the Lord, the Lord was pleased by it, was it a, was it a professional? No, but it wasn't the it wasn't so much the, the the quality; it was the quantity, the fact that, or the it wasn't the it wasn't the the great. It was the the the, the quality. It was the quality. The, what made it good was not so much how well he played the harmonica. What made it good was it was coming from a heart that was full of joy. And that man, more than likely, I didn't know anything about this man, um, but more than likely, um, earthly speaking, he didn't have much. But because he was a child of God, he knew he had everything. And, and so he was just praising the Lord. And, and you notice here David says, you, you praise him with loud clashing cymbals. So, so that means that our, our worship should be done with joy, with enthusiasm, with exuberance, with excellence. Everything that we do for God should be done with excellence. So so as the choir, they prepare. They prepare to sing. They don't just show up on Sunday morning and say, hey, what song are we going to sing? Let's do our best. No, they, they practice. Same for preaching. I don't just stand up in the pulpit and say, okay, well, I'm going to wait until I get up the pulpit for God to give me something. No, I 
Study throughout the week. If you're a Sunday school teacher, that's a form of worship. You prepare. We're doing it with excellence. We're doing it with exuberance. Our worship should be loud. Sometimes we complain that the music's too loud. Well, according to the book of Psalms, music is supposed to be loud because we're doing it with, with joy and enthusiasm. I've never, not one time have I ever been to a football game that was quiet. It's always, there's enthusiasm. The home team is cheering. They're excited. And that's the way as God's people, we should be excited in worship, filled with exuberance and joy because of the great God that we serve. So that's the manner of praise. And then we we conclude in verse 6 with the participants of praise. That's the who. Who is it that's the praise? The Lord. He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So there's your answer. Who's to praise the Lord? Everything that has breath, especially of all people, who are the ones that should praise the Lord? The redeemed, the redeemed of the Lord. We're the ones that really can only truly praise um, the Lord. Psalm 30, verse 4 says, Sing praises of the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. What a great way to end this book on praising the Lord. You know, as I was preparing this question, I kind of thought about where we're at, all that we're facing in America, and the question of what if kind of popped in my mind. You know, what if, what if uh, the, the coronavirus, what if it never goes away? What if they're, they're not able to find a, a vaccine for it? What if, uh, what if come November, there's a lot of talk about the election and everything. And what if come November, the, the person that you vote for, what if they don't get elected? Um, what, what are we going to do if maybe the economy completely crashes, stock market crashes? What are we going to do? Well, for God's people, we know what we're going to do. Psalm 150 tells us what to do. Praise the Lord. We're going to praise him no matter what. Because no matter what happens down here, it doesn't change who he is. He will never change. So therefore, as God's people, we should never change in regards to our worship. Let us be sure that our focus is not on ourselves. Our focus is not on the circumstances of life. But let us make sure that our focus is on the Lord. And let us praise him and let us praise him well. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this, this wonderful study that we've had over the past seven years in the book of Psalms. And what a fitting and great way to end this study on one, in 150 as we just talk about praising you. And may we as a people be a people of praise at all times and in all places, may we praise you. Lord, tonight I pray for anybody who may be watching they don't know you in a personal way. The things that I've said tonight are foreign to them because they've never personally met you. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open their eyes to their need for Jesus Christ, that you would draw them to themselves, to, to you tonight, and that they would surrender all to you. And Lord, for those of us who do know you, Lord, I pray that we would be a people of praise. I pray for those tonight, maybe they're facing some really difficult things. And while I don't make light of anything that anybody may be facing tonight, I pray that no matter what, we would praise you in the good times and in the bad times. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Looking forward to Sunday. Uh, until then, God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.